Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here and another Linux OS review. Today we are looking at Ubuntu GNOME 15.10. Now uh, I'm recording this October the 3rd, so I realize we're a couple weeks out from the official release of the 15.10 series, but we're past feature freeze and from this point on it's just some bug fixing. So uh, I figured, hey, let's go ahead and start looking at these uh, at the different Ubuntu releases for 15.10. And, and, you know, even though this is still a beta release that I am looking at, we are uh, I'm happy to report we're very short on on bugs right now. Uh, for the most part, things have been working for me you know just fine I've, I've had a couple of bugs but you know not much so anyway what are we looking at with this release well we've got kernel 4.2 and as far as gnome shell goes we have 316 by default and uh, you know i know a lot of you who are running uh, ubuntu gnome 1504 you use the staging ppa to upgrade to 316 you got it by default now and uh, you you know, if if you, if you want, you will be able to upgrade to uh, 318 using the stage staging PPA. However, I will warn you, uh, I've been playing around with it for a few days, and as of right now, using that staging PPA to go to 318, pretty buggy. So, um, uh, you know, unless you either want to play with fire or um, you know you just want to have a look see. I would hold off a little while. So let's take a look at some of the software we've got included here. Uh, I haven't added much. I had to, there's a few things I had to add so I could do this recording, but for the most part, not much. So we've got Solitaire for some uh, light gaming. We've got our archive manager, our backups, GNOME books. We've got Brazero for disk burning. We've got our GNOME calculator, Cheese webcam viewer. Deconf editor, GNOME disk, our disk usage analyzer. Um, we've got our document viewer, Evine. Uh, empathy for our instant messaging. Evolution for our email needs. Nautilus files. Uh, Firefox for our web browser. Gedit for text editing. We've got the LibreOffice suite. And uh, we've got Mahjong and mines for a little more gaming. We've got no maps. In addition to uh, Rhythmbox, we have uh, no music, and I'll come back and talk a little bit about that later. Also talk a little bit more about uh, Gnome Photos, which has replaced um, uh, Shotwell for our photo needs. As I mentioned, we have both Rhythmbox and no music. Um, why both, I'm not exactly sure. Um, we've got GNOME screenshot, our settings, uh, simple screen recorder. I added that so that I could do my, uh, so I could do this video. Uh, of course, our software updater, and uh, so we've got a startup disk creator, uh, Sudoku, Synaptic. I added that. Uh, where am I at? Oh, our system monitor, transmission for our uh, BitTorrent. Uh, the GNOME Tweak Tool, Ubuntu Software Center, GNOME Videos, and GNOME Weather. So let's take a look at GNOME Photos. So you can view items either by how recently the photo was taken, by albums, and then favorites. Now let's just go and I'll pick one of these. And you know, just click on it and it'll pull it open for you and you can view the picture and you can do it sort of slideshow you know moving on to the next item and I have noticed that it it seems to lag just a bit at least compared to um, at least compared to shot well now the one thing that at least to me is kinda irritating is that anything on your computer that is a JPEG it seems to pull that into into the albums and whatnot. So it's not just stuff that is stored in your picture folder. And you know, I've been playing around with this, trying to see if there was some option that you know it would only view stuff that is in my picture folder, but uh, apparently not. So 
you know, I don't. Uh, I need to play around with with uh, gnome photos more to decide whether I like it or not. You know, normally uh, I am a digicam person. I really, really like that that software, that piece of software. Um, so you know, the the really, I guess you could call it simplified controls that you have there have here. It's really not for me. Um, you know, other people may may like it better than I do, but at least right now, to me, this is, uh, uh, you know, I'm I'm not too happy with it. Let's just go that route. Let me close this up and let's look at that other new one, music. Now, no music. Uh, I'm liking this one. Um, pretty simple interface, uh, and you know it. It just searches what is in your music folder, so it'll it'll go and pull in um, you know album covers for you, and then uh, so you can look at things via albums by artist, and then songs, and then by playlist. And uh, you know, like I said, I've been playing around with this a couple of days now, and uh, this I like. Um, now I don't demand a whole lot from uh, from a music player, you know. I'm getting everything that I want here. Um, you know, some people may want something with some more features or whatnot, but you know, at least for me, it's got all the bases covered. Uh, I was playing some music a little earlier. I haven't really played around with doing playlists or anything like that, but uh, uh, you know, for a simple music player, uh, really like it. So there's been a few changes as far as theming goes. Not a lot, but a little bit here. And uh, first, let's talk about backgrounds. Those are essentially the same. Now you don't have a huge number of, uh, of backgrounds to select from, but a decent amount. Uh, but like I said, I think all of these are the same as what we've seen previously. Uh, let me open up the tweak tool. And here's where we see some differences. One is, We've got this Numix theme installed here, so if you want to give the Numix theme a shot, you can do that. Um, but going back to Adwata, when you go and enable the global dark theme, the uh, the Ubuntu Software Center finally let's see if I can spell today. Um, They've they've tweaked it so that it looks decent, uh, or I wouldn't even say that. The but it's readable, um, which was always the issue when you went with a dark theme on Ubuntu Software Center. After you after you went to a dark theme, it, it was essentially unreadable. Well, you know you don't have that anymore. Um, it it looks fairly good for uh, you know under a dark theme it's uh, the readability is there so uh, I'm glad they have finally fixed that now personally I'm not a big dark theme person I'm, a, I'm I, I like the lighter shades but uh, you know for those who do like the darker themes uh, this has fixed a long-standing issue so besides the stuff that I mentioned, you know, we've upgraded packages. You you got the a newer release of Firefox, newer release of you know LibreOffice, that sort of thing. Ubiquity, the Ubuntu installer, is much improved, uh, at least from what I could see. In previous versions, when we would get to the stage where it's got to detect all of your hard drives and that before you start partitioning and that sort of thing at least for me it always seemed to lag and just hang there forever um, did not run into that this time there was you know a little bit of a pause five maybe ten seconds at the outside but that was it and you know I, in in previous versions you know I've gotten used to you got to that stage of the installer you walked away for five minutes and uh, you know and then came back and finished the installation not now it uh, it ran much much smoother for me so uh, two thumbs up on that um, 
And having said that, I think that about covers everything that I wanted to talk to. I mean, I said, like I said, there were I've had a few minor bugs, but there has not been that much. Everything has just seemed to work. Um, so you know, for you, those of you that are wanting to to go ahead and get started with 1510, I th I think we're probably stable enough, even though we're still a couple weeks out from final release I think we are stable enough that you could go ahead and um, you know and, and install this and use it for your daily driver now I will say that a lot of the PPAs out there if you're used to uh, you know downloading extra stuff from from PPAs um, a lot of the PPAs have not yet updated for the 15.10 series I ran into that with simple screen recorder you know they did not have a selection there for uh, installing simple screen recorder on 15.10 now I, I kinda worked around it and, uh, and downloaded the Debian file and installed that way um, so you know there was a workaround but you know just be aware that since the uh, the 15.10 series has not officially been released yet a lot of PPAs just have not updated to 15.10 yet but um, from a functional standpoint everything has been working for me um, the couple of minor glitches have been very minor um, you know go ahead and, and, and give this release a shot so on that note, I think that about finishes the review up. As always, give us a big old thumbs up, thumbs down. Let me know what you think. And as always, I'll try to get to all the questions, comments, and all that kind of stuff as soon as possible. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Love having lots of subscribers. Um, and as always, I will see you all on the next video. Thanks a lot.